Some people think of Islam as a religion. Others think of it as a political ideology. Still others think of it as a comprehensive way of life. I think of Islam as history's greatest money-making scheme. Consider this. If you live in a small town that no one's ever heard of, in the middle of a desert that no one cares about, how do you convince nearly a quarter of the world's population to give you money? Revelations. Revelations can turn your desert dump into a bustling metropolis. Revelations can help you upgrade your Camelac to a Cadillac. All you need are the right revelations. Muhammad, of course, recruited fighters by promising them money and women. Sahih al-Bukhari, 2787. Narrated Abu Huraira, I heard Allah's messenger saying, the example of a mujahid, a jihadi, in Allah's cause, and Allah knows better who really strives in his cause, is like a person who observes psalm, fasting, and offers salat, prayer, continuously. Allah guarantees that he will admit the mujahid in his cause into paradise if he is killed. Otherwise, he will return him to his home safely with rewards and war booty. But he later admitted that his revelations were designed to make endless trunks of money for his tribe. In Ibn Kathir's Battles of the Prophet, we read about the historical background of Surah 9, verses 28 to 29. Allah, Most High, ordered the believers to prohibit the disbelievers from entering or coming near the sacred mosque. On that, Quraysh, that's Muhammad's tribe, thought that this would reduce their profits from trade. So, Muhammad wasn't allowing non-Muslims to take the pilgrimage to Mecca, and the leaders of his tribe were worried that this would affect their bank accounts. Is the Prophet going to reduce their profits? No because Allah had a solution. Therefore, Allah, Most High, compensated them and ordered them to fight the people of the book, Jews and Christians, until they embrace Islam or pay the jizya. Notice, if Muslims attack Jews and Christians and the Jews and Christians convert, they pay zakat and take the pilgrimage to Mecca. Muhammad's tribe makes money. But if the Jews and Christians don't convert, they have to pay the jizya, and Muhammad's tribe makes money. Either way, money pours into Mecca. Allah says, O you who believe, truly the pagans are unclean, so let them not, after this year of theirs, approach the sacred mosque. And if you fear poverty, Soon will Allah enrich you, if he wills, out of his bounty, for Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. Fight those who believe not in Allah nor the last day, nor hold that forbidden which hath been forbidden by Allah and his messenger, nor acknowledge the religion of truth from among the people of the book, Jews and Christians, until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves subdued. If you fear poverty, because the pagans are no longer allowed near the sacred mosque, soon will Allah enrich you. How? How's he going to do that? Fight those who believe not in Allah from among the people of the book, Jews and Christians, until they pay the jizya with willing submission. Muhammad's tribe was worried about losing money, but Allah promised to enrich them by forcing Jews and Christians to hand over their money. So what did Muhammad do? Therefore, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon the Jewish woman who poisoned him, decided to fight the Romans in order to call them to Islam. Why did Muhammad decide to fight the Romans? Because the Romans were attacking? No, because Allah ordered Muslims to fight Jews and Christians until the Jews and Christians either convert, in which case they pay zakat, or are subjugated, in which case they pay jizya. Islam is a political and religious system designed, at least in part, to enrich the city of Mecca. And it has. The more Islam spreads, the richer Mecca becomes. 
Say what you want about Muhammad and his violence and many perversions, but that man turned the armpit of Arabia into the heart of global paganism through the power of revelations. I've been involved in a number of cults, both as a leader and a follower. You have more fun as a follower, but you make more money as a leader.